Okay, my name is Akashi guys and I know it's another tier list but this is going to be the last one up until the new ultra drops but I wanted to do this one because there was two big shifts in the meta in a sense anyways we've got the new ultra omega Shenron he's not new but we've got a plat for him and it's made a big difference if you have actually used them in pvp he is a whole new unit it's actually insane it's literally a Zenkai in one equipment but aside from that we've also got the new Zenkai legends limited kid boo who's also made quite a shift since he's got endurance that has actually she boosted him up a lot and he already has a plat which just helps him on top so the meta has shifted quite a bit just because of those two changes a lot of people have been trying out new teams and of course we recently did have the new ultimate gohan and super saiyan god goku drop so i wanted to make a finalized tier list before the ultra drops to part three so hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this let's get straight into this as per usual we got a shout out the boy dingy he's the one that makes the tier list so that we can use it and make the video so if you want to make your own tier list definitely go ahead and give him a follow He's close to 4,000 followers. So if you haven't followed him, go follow him. And you can see the link is right there so that you guys can make your own tier list if need be. That's all I've got to say here, man. Thanks to the guy, Dingy, man. That's my guy. Let's get into this now. Right, so this is not something I usually add in a meta tier list video, but I'm going to for this one occasion, considering that our ultra is going to drop. And I want to see how drastically this list will change. Between even the first part and now, the list has drastically changed. So we're looking at this, right? These are the most used units. So it's not about who's the best. The reasons why they're used, we don't know. We just know they are the most used units, specifically above BR70 players like br70 upwards so if you're below br70 you're not included in this result if you're above it or br70 then you are now i think what's important to know is vegeto is number one when vegeto released with gogeta gogeta was number one interesting ultra super saiyan 2 gohan is three cmz is four that anti saiyan stuff might be kicking in ultimate gohan is five probably because he only released i believe in the second half of the week maybe i might be wrong about that though uh, if my memory is serving me correctly beast gohan 6 rev Han 7 golden freezer 8 ui goku 9 pan 10 shin 11 god godku 12 which is insane considering he literally just released ultimate gohan made it to 5 though super 17 13 uvb 14 he was 6 last time or 7 which is insane he's dropped off uh broly 15 16 goku bardock 17 pycon fiku 18 G4 19 and VB 20. I think I said the numbers wrong. I think I might have said seven, but 17 Pycon did it. Cool. UGB was on this list. They also got extremes, but extremes don't matter. You know that. Gold, Ultra Gogeta Blue was on this list, but he dropped out. He was at 20th. But I think specifically the top 10 is important to know based on what people would like to use in God in, in God rank or BR 70 and above. It's usually down to just what people like, but often what people like is also what's good. But you can't say that as a fact because we simply don't have why people are being used. But you might just want to have this in mind just at the back of your head. Like Beast Gohan being at number six is kind of crazy considering people a lot of people say he's not good at all i think he's good but of course he, there are better units to use in the game and also just because a unit is high doesn't mean they're top of the game for example let's look at revhan is revhan really better than golden freezer or ultra ui kind of unlikely you know so don't take it too seriously it's just something i want to include for this video all right so we got the fan service tier and the honorable mentions tier like before we're gonna build our way up the fan service tier is just a tier for characters that people like, but they're not actually one of those contenders, you know. It should be very seen by these guys at the back. These guys, Bomku and Broly, just kind of missed out, but they still wouldn't make the top 10. They might just make honorable mentions at best, but I wouldn't have them in my top 10. I'm sure a lot of people can agree with that straightforward. And then the honorable mentions are guys that could almost make it, but they just didn't make the cut. So since we're here, I should really dive into these ones. We got Revhan. I think him being on this section is actually very, very important to note because he's that extra revival layer for hybrid Saiyans and actually can be used on Sun Family too. He's actually a sleeper option considering he's Zenkai buffs green Sun Family members. So a lot of people add him onto the team as a bench option, but he can also be brought into the battlefield to give you that extra life. Similar thing with Nap and Vegeta besides from the Zenkai buff, but they're limited to team options really and truly. And even on teams they can fit on, for example, Saiyans, they're just not going to get used. On Vegeta clan, they would obviously get used with the new fusing Vegeta on Gogeta. But with Nap and Vegeta, it's really a case where why would you use them as your third when you can just put somebody else like Ultimate Gohan and make it Sun Family, which is a 10 times better team. Ultra Omega here. So we've got him as one of the new reasons we're actually making this video. 
He's got endurance that's an added effect. He also is able to cancel boss, I believe, from everything except a rising rush. So I think it's like blue cards, ultimates, and awakened arts, which is low-key a downside, but it's something still there that allows him to stay alive. He's got that what I like to call unbreakable endurance. I think it's simply just the fact that GT is not as great. And if you're going to be running something like regeneration, it's not that he doesn't fit on it, but there's just way better teams, you know? So Omega Shenron, he kind of almost made the cut. He has insane damage, I'm not going to lie. Having endurance that can be not broken through by a lot of cases where you're nullifying endurance is very, very good. He also heals probably one of the most in the game. I think it's the most in the game after his endurance gets popped, but it's not really enough alone. Hopefully the, the new ultra drops is GT related. That immediately gives him amazing stock, which is why we're making this finalized tier list to bring him back up. But for now, I don't think he's contending with the other 10 that I'm going to have in this list. But he was just out of the range. Beast Gohan's here. I think people really sleep on the synergy he has on Hybrid Saiyans because of the Ultimate Gohan. Again, the Unbreakable Endurance where if somebody rushes you for Ultimate Gohan, uh, gives you a blue card, Ultimate card, things like those native Awakened Arts, all the buffs get cancelled. So if you have the effect to nullify endurance, it's going to get cancelled. And Beast Gohan also has that effect, but he doesn't have endurance. But having two units on your team that do that, plus Beast Gohan's insane damage, he's already healing a lot himself. He has uh, Vanish Recovery and whatnot. He's able to do insane damage if I didn't say that as well. He can also lock Rising Rushes and main abilities when he's last stand, I believe. It's just a lot of factors that allow him to also be a solo on the team. He's not the best guy on the team because obviously Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Ultimate Gohan exist. I'd even dive into the other sometime members. But he is an option that meshes very well with Ultimate Gohan. Super 17, powerful opponent. He's still quite insane with his blast damage, the gauge filling, the green card, the taps that stop you from using blues and strike arts. Very simple in general, but he's not just that guy right now with the team options, I think. Any team that you do want to run him on, you've got to super buff him. And for him to be your number one unit on the team, it's just not worth it in comparison to any other units on the list. But it's not that he can't get you good results. It's just easier to get better results with other guys. And then we've also got Kid Boo here, who's also a, um, you know what I'm saying, new unit. The reason why we're making this video, not a literally new unit. But he comes with Endurance. He gets Covenal for his first blast. His Vanish Recovery is insane. I think he's just missing out on the list. Because he's missing something small like I think it's key, key on entry. And um, he doesn't have Blast Arm on Strike. But the Endurance is really nice. You can get through it. But him in terms of skill is what's going to keep you alive. Because of the green card with the Vanish Recovery. He's actually very good. And he's obviously defense has gone up. Damage has gone up. And the teams he's on also help. This OST is crazy. But um, I think he's just not good enough in comparison to the other 10 we got on the list as well. That's why he's on the honorable mentions. Just making, just not making it. So the two guys we're making this video for just don't make it. But I still, they do still do, do add a shift to the game. Because a lot of people are going to be using them and considering they have, both of them have endurance. It's that layer that you still need to be aware of if you come up against them. So now we're going to get into the top 10 where things really matter. All right, so we got 9 and 10 here. And 9 and 10 shifted a lot for me, especially over recent times. Let's start with God Goku, though. So God Goku, it kind of feels like he's just being pushed out. I don't like that he's being pushed out, but I think it just is the case. I think God Key isn't at maximum strength yet. Maybe they're going to get something after the Annie. All the last part of the Annie is going to be something God Key related. Maybe Ultra UI, whatever. Cool. But I feel like God Key right now just isn't strong enough to compete with the other teams in the game. It's not a bad option. It's just not the best option. God Koo, he obviously has Endurance. He has the Explosive Green. He can block AoE green cards. But he's missing a few things such as Key on Entry. He is decent and can be used, but there's just better options on pretty much any team besides from God Key that he can be used on. If you want to run him with uh, Sun Family, Ultra Gohan's better than him, you know. On God Key is the safest position you have. You could, could use him on movies, I guess, but again, better options on movies for the team synergy, in my opinion. So looking at it, it's not that he himself is terrible. If he was to get a buff, it'd be kind of overkill, even though a lot of people would say that he does need it. But it's a small fix for him. I think a simple thing like key on entry, card and entry will make him a such more more better unit. Like he'd be a hundred times better. Maybe an extra unit drops that gives God Key a buff that can work well with him. He would get a hundred times better just like that. But it's just a few small things that he's missing out on that make him not great. Even the fact that he's built to like tank a lot of hits when he's meant to be an offensive unit is kind of just like, okay, you're kind of hustling backwards here. I don't have much more to say about God Goku. 
I think they kind of just missed the ball when they were designing him, especially in comparison to Ultimate Gohan. He's not bad enough to the point where I'd say he needs a buff, but he's not good enough to the point where I'm going to overhype him and move him higher on this list. I think before I had him at like 8, 9, 10, he could be anywhere between those. But I think he's very much more closer to the end of the list, even moving out of the list, debatably. I don't think he's worse than any of the guys below him, but it could easily turn and he's in in the honorable mentions instead of 10. But let's go into Margin Buu now. He's the one that's made like a sneak. Like he came out of nowhere. And I think it's going to be more so down to a lot of people's ex experience uh, listening to this opinion or not. Some people are going to hate it. Some people are going to like it. But let's look at this. Margin Buu, evil. He's very good on Margin Buu Saga. Now, this is very important to note. And you might think Margin Buu Saga is not a good team because it's not predominant, right? But you'd be surprised because that would be an, a wrong assumption. Margin Buu Saga is currently right now on the climb as one of the best teams in the game. If you want to not take my word for it, go to PvP and check the rankings. All of the top players in the world are consistently using Margin Buu Saga. It's a very, very valuable team right now. Margin Buu, as in the evil one we're looking at, number 9. The reason he's on the list is because he has some disrupt that works too well with two of the other best units in the game right now. You guys should know as Fusing Vegito and Ultimate Gohan. They somehow made M Margin Buu Saga an insane team. Now, let me actually go into other details of what Mar uh, Margin Buu Evil does. This guy here, he can cancel your buffs in the same way that uh, Ultimate Gohan does. So if you hit him with a rush, blue, da -da 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 -da, he's going to cancel the endurance nullification. Then he could switch out to Ultimate Gohan in the same way I spoke about Beast Gohan earlier. Extra factors, he heals a lot. He destroys your cards a lot. He buffs his team. He's able to heal on the combo end. And if the health goes to 50%, he's going to heal. He's going to reduce your key insanely. And he, I spoke about destroying cards. Like, you literally drop all your cards on. I believe it's on cover change as well. So, like, Margin Buu, he's tanky on top of all of that. And he's going to decrease your attack power. And I think the biggest thing when I fight him that is very, very annoying, it's similar to Super 17. No, it's more like Ultra Golden Freezer. This guy will increase your art cost. Now, a lot of people very much sleep on how impactful increasing art cost is. If your art cost goes up, you're going to be able to use less cards or no cards. Either way, you can't play. And when that happens, you might be able to get two cards out instead of your usual four. And that's mad annoying when you're trying to get long combos in. Or you might be forced to use a certain card because strikes are too expensive or blasts are too expensive either way. Or blue cards are too expensive. You can't play the way you want to. So because of that, I have to look at it to say that he's very much hitting this list. It's a very good sneak. A lot of people might not want to accept their opinion right now. Up until the ultra drops, I think you guys will see a lot more of Margin Buu Saga in PvP. Ultimate Gohan and Vegito are a very good deal duo. And having this guy on, on board with those two guys is a very hard team to deal with. Did I also mention he destroys your Dragon Ball? Which is extra, extra annoying as well. If you're using Vegito and you're trying to rush... Your, your Rising Rush just gets shafted for a couple cards, you know? you got to draw in the cards to actually use them to get the Dragon Balls back up. Very annoying. But yeah, I suggest you might want to give it more experience. Look at the leaderboards. So many people are using Margin Buu Saga. It's actually insane. And to think that Margin Buu Evil would be such a big hindrance, you might not believe it, but he is very, very good. You might not want to take my word for it. But again, it might be down to experience. But trust me, especially in the highest ranks, god rank level margin boot is up there man but yeah those are my nines and tens all right next up on the list at eight we've got super baby 2 super gauge 2 gauge oraga and honestly i want to say this before i get into talking about him in general i think he's going to be one of the units that could potentially fall off especially going down this list later on in the near future i think it's because he's not out he doesn't exist to be summoned for they have to make a return banner to make him valuable and i think a lot of people just wouldn't summon for super baby 2 over the anniversary hype characters there is a lot of people that will summon for him because he is especially good which is why he's a on this list but his appearances in pvp are decreasing heavily just because there's better options and if there's better options the teams that he's on, he's not on would gain more pop more popularity on top of the fact that you won't be able to use him if you didn't have him before and he released at quite a bad time right before the anniversary but let's get into why he's good which is why he's good enough to be on this list so this guy here he's an anti-saiyan type of guy he's the one of the perf most perfect units to use in pvp if 
if you want to overcome any of the Saiyans in the game, which is a very effective source, since considering most of the game right now is Saiyan based. We've got Godku, both fusion warriors that are new, of course, Ultra UI, even some that are not on the list. So for example, Broly, Nappa, Vegeta, Ultra Vegeta or Blue, Bomku. Anybody that's a Saiyan is going to have a hard time dealing with Super Baby. But I find the way he works is simply because of his gauge being so good, like I called him Super Baby, Super Gauge 2. If you can't kill him before his gauge fills, he adapts. Similar to how I mentioned Maharaga. You have to take him out before his gauge can fill or you're pissed. He's going to be able to heal that back. He's going to hit a blue card to empty his gauge. Then you have to, you're have you going to end up filling it again because he's also a tanky unit. But not just that, he has offensive capabilities. He buffs his team. The anti-Saiyan aspect doesn't just work for him. It works for his allies too. So in general, all aspects, he's super good. He also has a lot of tags. So if we're looking at him, he's on Saiyans, which is not his most ideal team, but he can be used there. Powerful opponents, which will be perfect for the anti-Saiyan stuff. And he's also on GT, which is not as best as good as those two teams I mentioned, but it's a team available to him. So his team options are just super good in general. He's also a super good unit himself, but his popularity right now is on the decline. And depending on what they drop for the Ultra, he's either going to go up or he's going to just plummet and not be seen anymore. So this is probably the peak of him, like right now. But depending on what drops, he's either going to go maybe up one or two spaces or he's going to drop off the top 10 completely based on reasons that I explained before. But individually, he's so good to the point where if you do have him, he's going to be that unit that will keep you alive on your team. You People will be thinking, what the hell's going on with the fact that when his gauge fills, he removes your vanish and whatnot. He heals a lot as well. So shout out Super Baby 2. But you're in a very vulnerable position right now. Similar to how Super 17 was in the middle of the list. Super Gauge 2 is now in the middle of the list. Could either move up or down depending on what happens next. Next up on the list number 7. We got CMZ. This Zenkai here is unreal. They kind of went overboard with him if you're asking me. But in the meta right now he's so valuable to the point where if you're not using him. Or if you're fighting against him. You will definitely see him as a threat. Now this guy similar to Super Baby 2. He's anti Saiyan meaning that he's going to do extra damage to Saiyan users in the game i already showed you there's a lot of them in the game so he actually has value because of that if there wasn't then it'd be a different story but he still is good outside of that his green card the explosive green is so annoying bringing time accounts up so he can do damage for the free ski on his first strike card subbing in he's able to get cover no which is obviously good his ultimate arts does so much damage i believe he gets minus 50 percent of damage a sustain cut and then on top of that he gets like 40 percent from his main ability he's gonna do ultimate damage on top of that which is crazy his main ability, able to get the Nullify Endurance. Now, the reason why it's good that he gets the Nullify Endurance on his main ability, it's similar to Ultra UI, is because units in the game nowadays cancel those buffs. Ultimate Gohan being the biggest case, I already spoke about the Unbreakable Endurance. If you have it on the main, that means for your Strike, Blast, and Taps, you can also Nullify Endurance. So you don't need to worry about using a big attack like a blue card or Ultimate, where your buffs will get cancelled. You can just go ahead and use those simple strikes and blasts and still nullify the endurance without worrying about your bus being cancelled. So he can just solo a lot easier than a lot of units would be able to. And he's a good element right now. There's only really one blue that's in the way to counter him. Besides for the new Kid Buu Zenkai, I guess. But Vegito is the obvious only counter to him right now. So outside of that, you're just going to be fighting a type neutral battle, which is an uphill battle most times. He's also super tanky. And let's not talk about how CMZ heals a lot it's like he heals most of the damage he takes he's practically immortal he doesn't have endurance or anything but he's able to survive a long time on the battlefield and he's on good teams powerful opponents meshing with super baby 2 he's on god key pretty much count carrying the get the, the, the team low key and i believe he works on fusion warriors which is the main team i use him on too so he's quite quite global i'm not gonna lie he's all over the place we gotta respect him for all those factors he could easily be higher on the list but I'm going to explain why I have the ones above higher than uh, CMZ. But I think he could easily be higher on the list depending on you. I've been using him a lot and he's probably one of the most fun units I've been using right now. So yeah, if you think I catch you in a green card, his blue card also gives him another green card, which is insane. And the last thing before I can finish glazing him because I've been talking for a minute now. He gets vanished back very easily. I think he gets 50% eight times every time the enemy switches. So you don't even have to like worry about um like... Uh, switching out you can just stay in with him and solo it's actually insane if he had endurance it would be so overkill but yeah that's number seven we got cmz okay so we got five and six here and i think a lot of people like this position but i can see a lot of people disliking this position now we got ui and gogeta 
I think I'm going to talk about UI first because I think he's better. I know I should go upwards, but I'm going to explain why Gogeta is in the exact same position as him. So let's talk about UI first. Ultra UI Goku. This guy here, he is the staller of death. If you can't hit him, you're not going to do damage. But he's dodging everything, so you're not going to be able to hit him. Natural, just big plus. He's also able to do insane damage himself. He gets cover on the green card. His main ability spawns an ultimate and a green card. And the green card spawns blast cards. The main ability, in addition to what I mentioned to CMZ, when you press the main ability, he's nullifying endurance off the main ability, which is obviously... A big factor how i explain where if you're using blast and strikes you don't have to worry about your buffs getting cancelled by a lot of big name guys that cancel buffs when you use blue cards ultimates or rising rushes etc so ui goku can put you in a position where you're able to take somebody out without getting your buffs cancelled if they have endurance let's also talk about the main thing about him or the thing that i think is the biggest problem is the fact that he doesn't let you switch out and that can happen twice in a game so once at any point in the beginning then if he's last stand that's the second time so if you try to cover change out he'll drag you back in and lock you in no switching not cut time accounts up no switching so there's no way you can escape it he's going to get a free ultimate as well from that so it's kind of annoying to deal with in general. He's also a pretty good element right now. Yellow countering units like Ultimate Gohan and Golden Freezer. So he's in a pretty good position for that as well. And then look at his teams. God Key, Sun Family, Saiyans. Very much up there in terms of what teams he can fit on. Very valuable for that for those reasons. I don't think there's much downsides to him. I guess. I, I can't really think of a downside. Maybe he's kind of glass in a sense, but I wouldn't really say that. I'd say because he's able to stall, that's his plus. Let's go into Gogeta now. Now, this is mostly going to be why Gogeta is on the same level as him. A lot of people have been downplaying Gogeta. And like I said already, I think UI is better. If you chose me, told me to pick one, I'm going to take UI. But I think Gogeta can definitely compete with him for reasons that are not the same as him. Now, we do know that Gogeta has the strike assault where he's able to avoid counters. Ironically, it's one of those counters or one of those counters that he can ignore are UI Goku's where he's just going to chain the strike hearts and be able to just continuously go through without getting flipped out of the combo. I didn't mention that earlier, but UI can flip out of combos. That's obviously his biggest thing, but when you're doing the strike assault, you don't have the opportunity to draw cards, and that's obviously a downside. So that's the kind of flaw. There's also the case where you can't chain from certain cards. So you can't chase from a, chain from a green card, and if you start the combo, you can't chain immediately. So the strike assault doesn't kick in. That's a big, big problem, you know? But let's look at his pros. Now, one thing that's going to come up later in this list is that Ultimate Ultra Gohan, sorry, Ultra Gohan, Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, he brings anti blast cards, which are one of the biggest things to deal with in this game. You don't know when it's going to be coming at you. It works for the whole team as well. It's a card that can be shared by the whole team. So if you're going to get hit by an anti blast card, the odds you're going to be able to wreck to it are pretty much zero in most cases. They're not zero, but they're pretty much zero. Unironically, Gogeta is the one guy on this whole list that can go through it, which is insane. I believe it's him and Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. He can counter his own mechanic. And why I say that is because on fusing Gogeta's blue card, he literally nullifies the blast. So he goes through it. In the same way Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan with his ultimate, he nullifies the blast. He just goes through it, similar to a Rising Rush. It's not going to be no blast armor break. So if you do want to get around the anti-blast thing, Oh, uh, fusing Gogeta Blue is one of those guys. Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is one of those guys. That's a big thing in the meta when Son Family is super, super relevant. Any team Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan can fit on is super, super relevant right now. Son Family Hybrid Saiyans. So I think Gogeta could also hang for those reasons. He also has the main ability where he's able to get his Vanish back. He spawns a blue card from it, which is also a good factor. He gets a lot of Vanish recovery before transformation and he heals a lot in general. So I think if we're looking at it from aspects of you really want to use Gogeta, he can hang with UI. I'm not saying he's better. I already said I think UI is better, but he does have pros to him that people do fail to mention. Let me also mention that he is quite tanky in general. He takes a lot of hits because of the impact resistance. Obviously, he's an offensive unit, so he shouldn't be like super, super tanky in, in general, but he should, do, he should do more offensive damage in my opinion. But it's enough for you to use him on the main teams. And if you don't have Ultra UI, he can fulfill that exact same role. So he, I wouldn't say he's necessary if you have Ultra UI. And that's what I was saying before he even came out. But I think a lot of people are downplaying his pros. Just because his Strike Assault isn't as good as it could have been. And his Strike Assault isn't that great. Like I said, it has, it's, it's pretty much flawed. 
But we shouldn't downplay his vanish recovery, his healing, his tanking, the fact that he can nullify the blast with his blue card. These are things that can help you in a lot of cases. But of course, he could have been better. So that's why I have Gogeta next to UI. There's a lot of pros to him that people often fail to mention when discussing him. And I thought I should show him some love because I've been using him recently and I don't even have him high starred. But I've used him and he's saved me a bunch of times with the mechanics that he does have. So I'm going to give him the props and have him right next to UI. But something I do want to add is CMZ could easily be above these guys. I was contemplating putting CMZ up at, at, at like so he would be uh five and then six seven would be ui and gogeta that could easily be the case but i think in most cases having that yellow to counter ultimate gohan who's very much high in the list is way more valuable than having a red to counter these yellows because ultimate gohan's a bigger problem so that's why i have them above cmz but i could see it either way as well i could see the arguments vice versa all right so we got ultra golden freeze at number four and he's only here for two reasons really he's obviously good but i'll dive into that in a sec but the main two reasons i've got him here is because for one powerful opponents is such an amazing counter to all of these main teams that have a lot of saiyans the anti-saiyan stuff is super super valuable in general especially right now though the second reason the second reason is that he's always juiced up He's always juiced up. This guy has so many Zenkai buffs to his disposal that even off boost, he doesn't feel like he's off boost because if you have him, he's juiced. He has the Zenkai buffs all the way there and the support factors. So if you run him on a team, this guy's a one-man army for sure. But he also does have good teammates, even though I would say he doesn't even need them. He also has the comeback ability, which gives him two lives. And then going into the extra layers that I wanted to talk about, like I was going to say later, his green card, I like to call it trifecta, but it really does more than three things now that I've said it so many times. Gives him cards, vanish recovery, cover no, key as well. All big factors to having you be able to survive a 1v3. The vanish recovery goes up based on how many allies are alive on the team. So obviously, I think at first it's like maybe 30 or 50%. Goes up to like 70 at the max, I think, or 80 at the max. So he's pretty much getting his vanish recovery all the way through from a green card. In most cases, he more, probably has more than one. So, in general, he's super good. And he actually increases the enemy's key when they switch in. I think I've had like a 99 key when fighting Golden Freezer. That basically allows the enemy to not play. Or they're going to do one card and their combo's over and they have to switch out. And when they switch out, that person's also going to have 99 key blasts, even if they get key on entry. So, the combos are not going to be long. They're not going to be long. You, you can't really deal with him. Now, what I do want to say about Golden Freezer is that his value is on the edge. Some people feel like Ultra UI, even CMZ could be more valued than him. Gogeta could also be more valuable than him. Now, looking at it, it depends on what drops next. If they drop G4 or something that is very anti-powerful opponent, and if we look at how the game has been moving, there's been a lot of powerful opponent buffs. Super Baby 2 dropped, Super 17 prior. We also have the Zenkai, Kid Buu. We have, um, did I mention CMZ? We have Omega Shenron, Nappa and Vegeta. They haven't been headlining these powerful opponents, but they exist. Margin Buu's there, Beerus is there. They haven't been headlining them, but these powerful opponents have been getting the underground buffs all the time. So if the next unit is very anti-powerful opponent, that could shift things so majorly for Golden Freezer, but he's really just surviving off the fact that his individual value is that insane but he also has a juice team for his sole purpose you know one unit could shift him from four to about eight seven easily but at the same time depending on if it's a powerful opponent which is unlikely in my opinion the next unit coming up he could easily go up his individual value is enough to keep him alive for a long time two lives and it's not a revival it's comeback so units like vegeto who get buffs when they take out a revival it wouldn't occur because it's comeback it's not revival that's something important to know it's a small difference so he's punishing you for punishing him that's nuts and he does a lot of damage because even if you're type advantage he'll go type neutral i've seen him do from ui goku to pretty much zero health so yeah that's why golden freeze is at four but he's also one of those ones that are very vulnerable could easily move down and if you think somebody's above him i could see the argument for it but for now, I think he's safe at four, in my opinion, anyways. All right, number three here. I don't really want to waste too much time on why Vegito's number three. It's kind of self-explanatory. He's on pretty much every best team in the game right now. Fusion Warriors, Son Family, Saiyans, Margin Buu Saga. He's fitting the bill all over the board. But we all know it's mainly because of his Rising Rush. I don't even need to dive into everything else he does. 
His Synchro is super fast. He's going to gain full health from it. But it's the Rising Rush. That's really selling. If you cover change, he goes type neutral. The Rising Rush, he's going to win no matter what. He's not allowed to lose. That's the way of the game. That's his kit. His Element Blue, he's only really countered by Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. God Q does exist. But Margin Buu, who's also on his team by enemy to him, is probably the biggest problem, I think, at the moment. Especially with the buff cancellation. He has good equip, equip options, but everybody does here. Do I need to say more about Vegito? I don't think so. He gets Vanish Recovery pretty fast from every card he draws. If you switch, I believe he gets draw speed. He heals quite a bit as well. He can cover no pretty easily before the transformation. It's just a safe option. It's not something that needs to be explained. It's not rocket science. I feel like if you're disagreeing with this option of him in the top three, you're kind of just trying to be against the grain. So I'm just going to end what I'm talking about here with fusing Super Vegito. I just feel like if you dis disagree with this, it's kind of you're just being ridiculous. I shouldn't need to explain this much. But yeah, that's number three, fusing Super Vegito. Right, so we have the one and two spots. Surprise, surprise. There's two Gohans controlling the game. Who would have thought, right? Teams we have here. Let's start about Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Now, I don't think Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is better than Ultimate Gohan right now. But he will be definitely off boost. Unless there's just a more disastrous purple that drops on top of Ultimate Gohan. Which is very unlikely. But I think Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan has the better kit. But right now, Ultimate Gohan with the boost is being insanely juiced. Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, we already know he has the anti-blast card. The armor break card. Where... He passes it to his team, and I think that carries the team, I'm not going to lie. The Explosive Green is just the icing on the cake. He also has Endurance, which is crazy, but he doesn't he isn't able to cancel the boss, which is a downside. Not that major of a downside, considering this guy is a one-man army. He's able to get Cover no very easily. He draws cards, he gets Key. Just super annoying factors to deal with. I didn't even talk about his two counters. So the counter gauge where he blocks. Then he also has the blue card counter, which is just annoying to deal with. If you think you've got the priority, uh-uh. His blue card's going to hit you. So it's very hard to get around him. But the only reason I think he's worse right now than Ultimate Gohan. So now I'm going to talk about Ultimate Gohan. Is because Ultimate Gohan is boosted. Now I'm going to talk about some downsides about Ultimate Gohan. It's like two or three things. One, he has very poor Zenkai buff options for the teams that he's being run on. Specifically Sun Family and Hybrid Saiyans. They're not the best options to buff him in the way, the same way that other characters have good, good uh, Zenkai buffs and whatnot. So... That's why I think one of the reasons why Ultimate Gohan Pulse Boost is going to be worse. But already on the boost, his defenses are pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. He heals a lot, so he's able to bypass the fact that allegations, not even the allegations, he's not bypassing the, the bad defense allegations. But because he heals so much, it pretty much covers the ground for him being defensively bad. But Pulse Boost, that could be a different story. Especially against characters like CMZ and UI Goku who's able to nullify endurance through simple strikes and blasts if you press their main. Whereas with other characters they can't do that so he's able to get the benefit of cancelling buffs when you hit him with a Rising Rush, Blue Card, Ultimate Arts, Awaken Arts etc. Those, those four I think it's only those four. He has so much to go with him so he has two gauges. The attack gauge, the time gauge starts with the time gauge and that's kind of just to nerf him but it's barely a nerf because the attack gauge happens so fast. His blue card's overkill, I believe he gets vanished from it and it nullifies endurance but his green card is the real problem which he gets vanished from as well. I believe his ultimate he gets vanished from as well or maybe it's not his blue card he gets, he gets ultimate and green but the blue card nullifies endurance which is just overkill. You know, he's the only character I believe who gets the main ability. Uh, with an ultimate art and a blue card that nullifies endurance that is overkill why do you have both you should have a blue card if you're gonna have the lf on the blue card that nullifies endurance but he nullifies endurance just for sake on the blue card and that's so greedy in my opinion allowing him to take out so many characters or anybody that you have that really is supposed to protect the team it's tough to deal with these guys together Margin Buu Saga, especially with Ultimate Gohan, Fusing Super Vegito, and Margin Buu, who's at the ninth spot or 10th spot. That team there as a trio is a problem, but if you don't want to use Margin Buu Saga, guess who's also green? Ultra Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and that makes it Son Family. If you don't want to use that guy, you could also use Ultra UI, Fusing Gogeta Blue. There's too many options with Son Family, Hybrid Saiyans, and Margin Buu Saga. Those three very, very dominant teams. I don't think I need to go more into the top one, top two. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like this. I think the top three are pretty much non-negotiable. Like, it's actually non-negotiable. But beyond that, there might be a little debate here and there. And I already addressed a lot of them. But I'm going to leave it like that. I think this 
list is kind of solid i'm gonna give it some time and then look back at it and then do an outro all right so i done some evaluating on the list and i stared at it for a long while so i didn't just want to end off the video after i finished the list i did further evaluation this is on live stream as well so what i did was i moved cmz into this section with the ui goku and the gogeta simply because i think he's literally interchangeable with these guys he can he has reasons to be better than these guys but at the same time having a yellow that are on sun family and saiyans and and you know god key as well the same team as cmz could also be a lot more effective so i could argue both ways so i'm just going to keep them in between these three as like interchangeables i decided to move him up and i, I think he's on the same tiers as these guys ugf i'm still kind of shaking on him maybe he could move down but i'm going to leave him there for now and i also added shin to the honorable mentions and go freezer to the fan service tier the anti-rush here shin is obviously good but i think margin boot is definitely better the green option is definitely better uh, to deal with the rising rush of uh, Vegito, who's guaranteed to hit that off, by the way. And he can cancel the buffs as well. Shin is obviously very disruptive as well, but Vegito will shred him, which is also something that you wanna don't want to deal with. But he isn't a bad option of Margin Buu Saga and can also be used on God Key with the likes of those guys. Zenkai buffed by this guy, I believe he's Zenkai buffs God Key. Yes. If not that, something else, but I think it's God Key. So yeah, that's the only changes I've made. It's just CMZ into the 567, where before it was 56 and he was 7. Shin in honorable mentions and go freezer in the fan service tier. But yeah, man, that's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think about the tier list. Anything you specifically disagree with or agree with. Don't just say you would disagree with it. I'd like to know what you actually think about the tier list. But of course, down to you. I also am curious to, to know what you guys think is going to be coming for the anniversary finale, part three, who the ultra is going to be. We all have our different thoughts. At the time you've probably seen this video, I already have my predictions up on the channel. So you can go check out my in the video that i've posted but outside of that this tier list was hard to make i want to see how much it shifts after part three hopefully you guys did enjoy this video if you haven't already make sure to press that subscribe button man we're on this grind to 100,000 subscribers i appreciate you guys for watching man my name is akashi guys and i'll see you guys in the next one man